Hello and welcome to our last uh, couple of lectures here. We're going to talk about pre-press and pre-media. If you've been following along, you'll know that this is um, a little out of the sequential order for our print production workflow, I guess, because your pre-press is going to be done before the printing and other things take place. But that's okay. It makes sense to put it here at the end. So we're going to cover um, two important components, or I guess one thing. It's kind of the same thing that we're talking about. One important component of the production workflow. So pre-press and pre-media if we're being specific, are two separate things. I'm going to use the terms interchangeably here um, because it just kind of depends on the facility you're talking about. Some may name it a different thing. Our print imaging lab here at campus uses pre-media to describe the department that handles pre-press or the pre-press the department to handle pre-media. Um, the difference is a slight one. Pre-media is basically anything that's done to prepare a job for print or production. Uh, whether it's print or not. So a photographer retouching photos before sending them to the pre-press department of a print shop, that's still pre-media. But we're going to lump it all together and say that that's the department of a print facility that's going to handle everything that leads to the final print production. So pre-press incorporates a whole lot of different things. <clears throat> There's a lot that falls under that roof. Uh, production planning, file management, archiving, and storage, file corrections, proofing, uh, workflow, scanning, correction, color correction, and all these things. You can read the rest of those bullet points. We're going to talk about the first two there, just typesetting and pre-flighting. To give you an example, uh, without going into every single detail of these, some of them we've talked about a little bit already. For example, uh, color correcting, um, imposition, we covered just a little bit. Separations, we know what those are for when we talk about color and half tones and that kind of stuff. So we're not going to go through every single one of these. We're just going to talk about those first two. I get an idea of what they are as major components of pre-press. So typesetting is um, sometimes confused with typography. It's not quite the same thing. Typesetting has to do with setting up the type to work in print, to avoid common problems so that the composition of the body of text on a page looks the best and so that nothing gets cut off, nothing is uh, taking up space unnecessarily. There is an art form to it, and there are some rules, but it isn't quite the same thing as typography, where the intent is to um, design the text on a page to uh, accomplish certain certain goals or whatever. Anyways, some basic rules with type typesetting are to not stack words on top of each other. Um, if we had our first two bullet points here, starting with the word don't, that would be poor typesetting. We want to avoid stacking words on top of each other. We want to adjust the letting of our text. Uh, that is a typography term we learned about, letting. However, uh, in typesetting, it's going to have a big impact on how many words fit on the page and how cramped that text body text uh, section looks. Hyphenation. Uh, where do hyphens fall and how frequently do we hyphenate after just two characters so that a four-letter word gets hyphenated? Or do we include hyphens in certain places a little more strategically so as not to break up simple words? Uh, widows and orphans are an issue, too, that, that a typesetter would need to watch out for or a pre-press operator would need to watch out for when they're uh, carrying out typesetting. So this example here on the left-hand side, you see the old-fashioned version of typesetting. Luckily, now it's all done digitally, uh, but a uh, very labor-intensive process, very time-consuming. Very expensive. You had lots of uh, real estate that needed to take up, be taken up by the equipment and the staff and everything that goes into this process. So creating a document was done page by page with individual metal characters. On the right-hand side, you see a color photograph of, of that being done. You have lines of text being arranged into a document that's going to be inked up and put on press. More modern than that, but still pretty old school, is linotype or linotype. This was a process of melting lead or other soft metals and alloys of lead. Um, and then you melt those into little outlines of those texts. So basically the same kind of thing. It's just not individual characters that you have to line up. It's lines of text. So much faster than the old school typesetting, but still an inefficient, expensive, time-consuming, um, slow, very slow process. So something to be avoided now. Luckily, we don't deal with linotype anymore. That's more of a historical process that uh, isn't used, to my knowledge, anymore. Some uh, 
important things to consider with typesetting or what typesetting involves nowadays is, is just making the text look nice in a block. So if you were to ignore what the words say here in these two colored boxes and just look at the shape of the outline of that text, the image on the right hand side or the, the column of text on the right hand side is the appropriately typeset block of text and the left hand side is the original. So looking at the bottom left hand side in the yellow box, you'll see the word all floating down there at the bottom all by itself. Um, that's something that you'd want to avoid. That's called a widow at the end of a paragraph or a column. So you want to avoid that kind of thing. Um, the rag is referring to the ragged edge on the right hand side or the unjustified side of the page. So avoiding those ragged edges is something that a typesetter would want to uh, be particularly aware of. Adjusting the letting to make the type fit better into a space or to flow better visually is what a typesetter would do. Preflighting is the process of inspecting a document that you get from a designer. For example, um, if I were to send a PDF to our print imaging lab, somebody's going to look that over before just sending that to the press. We're going to have staff that knows what they're looking for and understands their workflow. They're going to evaluate that and try to catch any potential problems that my design might have. Um, for example, if I forgot to embed fonts or if I forgot to convert my images to CMYK or if I didn't use bleed properly or any number of other things, preflighting is going to save a ton of time and effort by avoiding reprints. If there's an error with my problem and the pre uh, the prepress folks don't catch it, then they might be responsible for having to handle that reprint and foot the bill. Likely, if I signed off on a proof, that would be my fault. And either way, we want a prepress operator to catch that in the pre-flight pre process. So uh, the next few slides are just a bunch of uh, examples, screen caps from a website that I'll share with you guys uh, that talks about why pre-flighting is important. Uh, the bottom line is it comes down to to money, to cost and time. If you don't pre-flight, errors will happen. They'll slip through and it will end up resulting in reprints, loss of customer satisfaction, customers not returning, customers not excited about paying their bills. So as a print shop, pre-flighting is super important. Um, as a designer, you want to avoid common problems. And these things come up all the time. Fonts that are not uh, appropriately embedded, images that are too low resolution, uh, the wrong color profile or space being used. Bleed is a major issue. Uh, the folks in our print and imaging lab can attest that uh, improper bleed settings are a huge problem that designers aren't aware of how to set that up properly. And so having pre-flight as part of that production workflow is extremely important because they can catch those issues before it goes to press. It's going to save a ton of time and expense and, and reprints and, and other problems. So some of the more specific issues, I hit on this a little bit before, image resolution, for example, um, low resolution images, the improper, incorrect file type, embedding a PNG file, for example, in your print uh, document is going to lead to issues when it goes to press. So avoiding those kind of issues is really important. That can be done in a number of ways. It can be done with pre-flight software or typically just InDesign it has a great pre-flight panel where you can set up a profile to watch for specific potential issues like image resolution. Another thing is, like I said before, RGB images in a CMYK document. This is going to lead to problems. Spot colors. Uh, designers like spot colors. It has a lot of benefits, but understanding what's capable on a certain press might lead to pre-flight issues or press issues that a pre-flight uh, worker would need to correct. Font issues. Um, if a font isn't embedded, then the computer is going to need to replace it with something else. Uh, rich black or deep black. If there's not the proper build of CMYK, then the blacks are going to come out gray. And that may not be an issue sometimes, but most of the time it's going to be a noticeable problem. And so understanding how deep black works is important as a designer, but it's critical as a pre-flight or pre-press operator to understand that kind of stuff and to be able to, uh, to pick that out, catch it, and fix it. Transparency looks great in a PSD. It doesn't always work out right in the PDF. Layers also critical in a PSD file. 
Uh, Illustrator uses layers, InDesign uses layers. Layers are part of the design workflow, but they're things that are gonna cause problems potentially in print. So again, Preflight's gonna catch those problems. Bleed, like I said before, huge problem uh, on printed jobs. Designers design to the edge of the document window in Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever other program. And they may not be aware of what the bleed requirements are using the proper bleed settings in their InDesign document so that that bleed is communicated, that's important. Uh, Pre-flight profiles are going to catch that kind of stuff in InDesign. Lastly, ink coverage is super critical. Depending on the print process, for example, web offset, if there's too much ink <coughs> on a sheet, it's going to cause that page to dampen and tear is the pressure of that big sheet or uh, web of paper moving through the press. Um, on offset, too much ink is gonna make it stick. So that's another problem you gotta watch out for. You don't want a brick of pages that are all stuck together because of too much ink. I'm not gonna read through each of these benefits of pre-flight, uh, but you can take a look at it and see. It's gonna help you meet deadlines, save money and time, and have happy customers avoid problems as a designer and as a print facility and, and everybody in the whole chain is going to be happier. So use pre-flight profiles in InDesign. And if you are working in a print facility, then trust your pre-flight folks to catch problems for you and, and save you all that time and effort.